we come to beekeepers and we talk to them about robots and usually when they hear about it first they kind of make fun of me they're like what star wars what are you talking about Star Safra, you are CEO and co-founder of Israeli startup BeeWise, which makes robotic beehives with an efficiency that no human beekeeper could match. Okay, so we need bees. Bees are under threat. Uh, enter the robotic beehive. Why? What we did is we built a device, think of it as a box, that essentially gives the bees a fighting chance. So we took all the modern issues that we've seen and we try to give them specific, unique tools for the bees to cope with these issues. For example, um, if there's pesticides in the field, our device knows to shut down and prevent the pesticides from entering the colony. It can harvest the honey, it can split hive, it can combine hive. It essentially does 97% of what a beekeeper would do in the field, but the difference is it does it in real time. The robot doesn't get tired. It never goes on vacation. It doesn't go to sleep. It monitors the hives 24 seven. It identifies what is going on in there using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and neural networks. And once it does, it applies the right treatment using precision robotics in real time. Fab, so we, uh, we want to know more about you since we're meeting the maker. Uh, interested in your journey as to how you came into working with beehives because uh, you didn't start as a beekeeper, did you? We didn't choose the bees, the bees chose us. I used to be a software developer back in the day and kind of navigated more I, 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 towards the, the business side of things. And this is startup number six for me. So I had five previous companies that I founded. This one, I met my co-founder, he's actually a beekeeper and he had this pain, he had this issue with, with you know, his colonies collapsing and all the issues, other issues of uh, labor that we discussed. And he came up with the idea and together we, we founded the company and we had this vision on how to save the bees and help the commercial beekeepers. You know, after five companies and, and kind of almost 20 years of a career, you have a, you kind of narrow down what you're really interested in. So I like, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, I like verticals. I like to work within verticals and not horizontal plays, so vertical plays. Uh, I wanted to make sure the next company I get into would be a billion dollar business, so meaningful, global, at scale, not a small kind of quick win. And I wanted to be a SaaS business, software as a service, and I wanted to be, and I wanted to have impact. And I realized after about five months of working, this is it. This company actually adheres to all this criteria perfectly. And the nice thing is when you work in a lot of ambiguity, which I like, this is kind of my, my forte, working in a very ambiguous environment, a lot of cloud around you, so you really don't see the path. Um, you iterate, you do, you do very, very small iterations very quickly, and you kind of navigate that, that cloud, that fog, right? And you find your path. Um, so you throw something out there, see if it sticks. If it doesn't, you throw something else, and slowly you kind of find the boundaries of your sandbox and where you're playing and then you start really kind of doing the product market fit it took us a couple of years to, to get there today i feel very confident around the product so the product today the service the solution is the one thing that i kind of feel that doesn't keep me up at night when you were putting everything together what were the technical and commercial challenges uh, that you encountered so first i'll start by saying i'm a big believer in moving between industries and bringing kind of previous uh, know-how, so cross-pollinating between industries. So we, we bring a lot of disciplines, or I, I, br I brought in, I feel like a lot of disciplines from other industries. When you look at our company, the hiring process, the talent we bring in, how the offices are structured, how we operate internally, the, the how neat everything is and tidy and structured, um, you don't see a lot of companies like that in the ag space where it's more usually kind of, it's different, let's just say that. And so I feel like if you went in and you kind of uh, dug into our company and did a little bit of diligence and really kind of went into the nitty gritty, uh, I feel like you, you, you'd you see a real high tech, classic uh, startup that is well-structured, well-built for scale and um, 
regardless of the product and the solution, whether we save the bees or we build software for enterprise, the structure has to be a strong structure that can grow. You know, the base of the pyramid has to be strong that, to allow us to grow and scale and really kind of take this global. So now the challenge is to remain influential. Um, as a company, who's your competition? And how, you know, do you stay ahead of them? I encourage competition because if we work together, we will all get to save the bees together. I'll give you an example, you know, Rosanna. Think about running a marathon. You start running a marathon, after 100 yards or 100 meters that you run, you don't look to your sides and say, these are my competitors. But when you're like, you know, in the last two, you know, mile, in the last mile, then you look to your side and say, these are my competitors. So we're like, we're not even a mile into that marathon. So, you know, I actually want them to help me message the market and kind of uh, educate the market, right? Uh, in terms of saving the bees and promoting those technologies. There's a lot of competitors most of them are really good and i hope that keeps that continues we have to be better but um we still have a long marathon to run do you sort of see yourself now as a beekeeper of sorts like a new age beekeeper you know i i, I don't think so i have so much more to learn and grow and and i i wouldn't even be i you, you know uh, the real beekeepers are people who work with bees you know with their hands again for years and years the bees teach you a lesson in humility. If you do something wrong, you get stung. If you annoy them, they're, they're very uh, direct with their, when they convey their, their annoyance with you. But, but I'll also say that when you go and stand next to our device and you're standing in the midst of two million bees that are in the middle of pollinating a, a crop, avocado or what have you, alfalfa, it's an amazing, it's an incredible experience. You, you, you feel nature in action. Powerful. Um, how many times have you been stung? You, you know, we are a 75 people company and every single one of my employees got stung at some point. Um, I got stung zero times. I hold the record for the company and I hope I'm not going to jinx them now. <laughs> <laughs>